Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Jared grabbed me last night and said, hey, why don't we use the bridge bore to drill these holes in these brackets? These are brackets that we make for the rimfire steel targets that we sell. And I love the bracket and it works great. And we punch these uh, 3 8 hole on the Whitney punch press, which works like a charm. It's absolutely the way to go. And we, we set the hole locations for both the drilled hole and the punched hole with this little fixture here. So I'm, I'm happy with it. We use these captive pins to hold the spring in place. And I can't figure out a way to, a better way than drilling them to get these holes in there. They're too small to punch. Whitney doesn't sell tooling this small. And as a general rule, you can't punch uh, deeper than the diameter of the hole. So these are about a eighth of an inch and you can't punch in theory an eighth of an inch hole deeper than an eighth of an inch. And these are quarter inch thick brackets. So for now, at least we got to drill them. Up until now, we've been drilling these on a drill press with a Wilton Camlock vise. The hole's already spotted. There's a, it's a loose tolerance anyways. You know, the hole could be up or down by probably 20,000 and it wouldn't matter. But again, you've got that spot uh, already set from the fixture punch. So you're not gonna be off that far. So the, the drill press works, but I think the bridge port's gonna be a lot nicer for a couple reasons. Having soft jaws and a machinist vise versus a drill vise, that's, that's going to be an improvement and the all else equal of bridge ports should have a lot less run out so you'll have better drill tool life than you will on a cheap import drill press and most importantly um, i can't get the quill feed to work right now in this bridge port i've got to i've got to work on that but once we have quill feed working you can power feed down which is be a, which will be a huge improvement but um, soft jaws alone and being able to indicate the part in the exact same spot repeatedly that's going to be the win so that's what we're going to do today it's a fun little project because it's sort of showing a part that we cut on the plasma machine that we're going to machine soft jaws on the Tormach to use in the bridge port. So kind of a fun little uh, thing that encapsulates a lot of what we do here in the shop. So let's do the typical real quick SolidWorks cam Tormach and put them to work. Here is what I came up with. And this took me about uh, eight minutes this morning. We're going to see if we like it or not. Now, if you had asked me to do this a year or two ago, I would have been so excited to go over engineer this and I would have made these soft jaws with you know complex contours to mate and hug the part you know probably probably this profile and this and I'd be using you know SolidWorks or, or Libre at the time to you know export this contour and import it into this assembly or part and automatically relieve it and cut it and blah 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 and I've started to mature as a machinist and realize no simplicity is where it's at so here's what I'd like to try to do we're gonna make these a simple set of step soft jaws. The only step we need for this part is this larger one here that protrudes out, uh, it says 190, it's actually 3 16 And then what we'll do is we will have a 1 8 inch dowel pin that will act as our X stop. And the there are some other places you could put this pin, including say right here, but I want to be able to move the part in and out this way. And I like, for, to, for me, it's natural to push the part to the right as you're pushing down when you tighten the vise. Uh, whereas if the pin were right here, you would be pulling away, but still trying to push down over here to make sure the part remains you know, relatively flat in the, in the vise. So I think this should work. Actually, there's no reason why it won't work. It's just uh, it's a question of style and, and what's a preference. Now, um, and we will actually ream that slightly, you know, probably to 126 so that that pin will actually just pull in and out. That way we can use these when, uh, maybe even leave these in the bridge port and use them as just a regular old set of either jaws, big step jaws. And then while I'm at it, we're gonna machine a 50 thou deep step um, up here, which won't be used for this part, but sometimes if, when you wanna face off stock, it's really nice to have a thin, set of, uh, you know, these are effectively a uh, really high parallel, if you will. They don't have a lot of work holding to them, so you gotta be careful you don't rip the part out of the vise, but a um, number of times uh, where stuff like that comes in handy. The other nice thing about this is these are gonna be real, real quick to make. And so let's actually do that right now. Open the part here. We will export it to Sprut Cam. And let's make this cam together. So I gotta rotate the part. First, I got to rotate it on the X to get it oriented correctly. 
into PMC finite. Good, I like that. And so all we need to do is a couple of 2D contours. Machining, machining, finishing, 2D contour. Select the edge, curve, and I. for me this is tool 31, which is a quarter inch end mill. Run it at 5100 at you know 15 inches a minute. I can yeah go faster, slower. We'll do the uh, we'll actually do it this way. I usually don't. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I don't by choosing bottom level. And so then we'll do it in there. We'll do a cleanup pass just because these are jaws, and we'll rough it. Yeah, we don't need to rough it actually. So well, let's do a lead in. Okay, and then we will just copy this and do it for that curve with that bottom level. And then this one we don't need to. <clears throat> we can do this in really in one with one cleanup. Shouldn't get a yeah there we go. So we shouldn't get a red check on this. Qu very quick simulation. Perfect. And uh, yeah, we'll drill that hole offline. There's no reason to. Uh, do that on the Tormach and set up a program. Let's head over to the machine. Okay, let's grab a set of soft jaws. So, soft jaws in the vise, we will indicate them in with the Heimer Digital Probe. The X doesn't really matter here, so we're just doing two full width passes, so I will throw the second jaw in and not even have to re-indicate, which is nice. It's funny, I was, uh, Excited to make these jaws, but on the flip side, not. It's uh, I was right in the middle of filming this fourth axis video series, which I'm super excited to get out. And Jared really needs these jaws because we've got to make more of these uh, rimfire seal parts because uh, we had to keep up with inventory, and uh, it's a great problem to have. But I'll tell you, it's uh, it's an adjustment. You know, it's just sort of the small business world, and uh, having Jared on board has been spectacular. I got so lucky. He's a great guy. He's got great skills, but he's also, you know, he, he's willing and interested and capable of learning. But it's disruptive. You know, I'm in the middle of something and he needs something and I've got to, I've got to let him succeed and help him succeed. So anyways, as you can see here, no problem at all. Machine use with the Torma. Okay, let's mark that whole location. This surface plate, uh, the one I bought at the auction a few weeks ago, has been awesome. I was joking on Facebook, it makes me feel like I actually have a real machine shop. So, turn it on, touch off, I'll do an increment. We know it's down three and a half. This is the rear jaw, of course. And again, precision, you know, not really necessary here. And then, we know it's down 750 from this step. So increment there, come down 75,000, sorry, 75,000, not 750. This one, I kind of want to be close if I can, although the reality is drilling is never that precise. Good, so there we've got a little hole. Using the uh, old drill press that we used to make the parts themselves on to drill with a number 32 and then we will ream to 126. And this, folks, is why I love machining. Drop that in there. Just no play at all. But easily comes out. In fact, if it were bigger, I bet we could get a you hear when you pull something out. Um, that's awesome. Um, and done with uh, an inexpensive drill and actually inexpensive reamers. Really cool. All right, let's hop over to the Bridgeport. All right, NASCAR speed uh, vice jaw changes, or Formula One for my European viewers.
So, do they work? Well, let's see. Hold it in there, close this up a little bit. Haha, <laughs> that's awesome. That absolutely works. Uh, well, hey, while we're here, let's drill a hole. Want to hear something embarrassing? I don't own a single piece of R8 uh, collet tooling. So I've got the TTS adapter in there and we're just using uh, Tormach tooling, which is actually fine. Um, but I can tell you after I get the fourth axis installed and that video series up and I get the enclosure installed on the Tormach, we are gonna build a power draw bar for this thing because uh, we are. Let's see how she does. Folks, that's awesome. You can see my lighting set up here, by the way. Um, it's hard to describe, but it sounds better, it feels better, it, it, you can see the internal diameter wall of the part is better. I wasn't even using coolant, which we normally would use. I'm not using the power feed because it's not working. Um, this is a win, folks. And obviously, you know, a quarter turn, part pops out, next one pops in and repeats. Awesome. I'm super happy with this, and I know Jared will be as well. So. Uh, a quickie today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, I appreciate the likes, the thumbs up, the comments, the shares. Otherwise, I'll see you soon, folks. Take care.